Admission and Withdrawal of Partners, the Journal Entries and Dynamics of Admitting a Partner and Partner Withdrawal. Partnership interests are negotiable. Another person can buy a portion of a partner's interest in a partnership. The purchaser will now receive their purchase portion of the partnership income, but is not necessarily admitted as a partner unless the other partners agree to admit the purchaser. Otherwise, the purchaser receives the money from the partnership commensurate with the percentage purchased. When a new partner is admitted by investing cash or other assets in the partnership, the journal entries are the same as the initial formation of the journal as the initial formation journal entries. So they would look just the same as when the partners initially formed the partnership. The uh, dynamic that I'm talking about here is different from the one I described above where a part, uh, an outside person is purchasing a partnership interest from an additional an existing partner. So let's look at some new partners and um, what the dynamic can be. The new partner's percentage of ownership can equal the amount invested, exceed the amount invested, or be less than the amount invested. When a new partner is admitted, a new partnership must be formed. So let's look at the person, the portion of a current partner's interest when it's sold to someone outside of the partnership. So in other words, a partner can be in financial difficulty and, or not be as interested in being involved in the partnership and they can sell a portion of their partnership to someone else to get additional money and that person will receive income from the partnership. So after the partnership has been in business for some time, Perez has a capital balance of 26000 and now he wants to sell 50% of his partnership interest to a man named Rashid for $18,000. How would this be recorded on the books of the partnership? It would be recorded at $18,000, which is the money Perez received, or would it be recorded as 50% of 26000 because he sold 50% of his capital in the partnership? So would it be 13000 which would be 50% of 26000 or would it be 18000 This would be recorded on the books of the partnership at 13,000. It would be recorded as 50% of 26,000 because that's what he sold. That's all he's told the partnership is I have sold 50% of my capital interest. And so, um, Perez's capital account would be credit, I mean, debited for 13,000 to show that he has 13,000 less or 50% less of his capital balance. And Rashid would now be recorded as having a capital balance in the partnership and would be receiving this, port this portion of the partnership income and they would record his capital balance at 13000 This same journal entry would hold true if Perez sells his 50% interest for $5,000 or for $30,000. The partnership records the 50% interest of Perez's capital balance as the portion that would belong to Rashid. The cash given to Perez is between him and Rashid. The partnership may not even know the amount exchanged. All he has to do is tell the partnership how much of the percentage interest of his capital balance he is selling to another person. And again, Rashid is not necessarily admitted into the partnership unless the partnerships agree. Uh, it is between Perez and Rashid unless the other partners agree to accept Rashid as a partner. Now, let's look at admitting a new partner. The new partnership's interest in the partnership equals the amount invested. So, and this is a totally new scenario. In this one, Rashid will invest $22,000 for a 22% interest in the partnership. Now, how do we calculate this? Well, we say that his partnership interest is going to be $22,000. So, how do we know that the $22,000 he's invested equals the 22%? Well, the calculation is the same. It's going to be the same for all three of the uh, scenarios that I'm going to show you. So, we're going to take the present partners, the existing partners, and add in their two capital balances. So this is $52,000 for Zane, $26,000 for Perez. So the partner
partnership before Rashid uh, invests the cash is going to be worth 78000 Now, it doesn't necessarily always be that he invests cash, but for um, the examples that we're using and we're learning at this level, we're just going to consider it to be a cash contribution, but it could be non-cash, but we're just going to look at it as though it's cash. So the amount invested is going to be 22000 So once he's invested this money into the partnership, now the partnership is going to be worth $100,000. So 22% of $100,000 is $22,000. So in this instance, the cash don um, invested in the partnership equals the 22% interest. And so Rashid's capital balance will be worth $22,000 because it's $22,000 is the value of what he's investing and it also equals the amount of cash he's investing. Now let's look at a new partner's admitted. The new partner's interest in the partnership exceeds the amount invested. So the um, partnership could be very, very interesting to the new partner and he's willing to pay more than the value of the percentage of the partnership that he is receiving because the partnership may be very viable. It has a lot of income potential. So in this instance, Rashid invests $42,000 for a 25% interest in the partnership. And as a aside, the value of the partnership interests may be very um, um, enticing to Rashid. It may not have much income potential at the present time. This is a different scenario that I um, am describing. But say they own a, a, a wonderful piece of property that will eventually have a lot of income potential. And so he's willing to invest because the value of the property is escalating. So I'm just trying to give you some scenarios as to why someone would do this. Anyway, let's get back to this. So he is going to purchase a 25% interest in the partnership, and he's willing to invest $42,000. Now we have the same calculation as before. We add up the capital balances of the existing partners worth $78,000, and now the amount invested is $42,000. Now the partnership will be worth $120,000 once he invests this $42,000. 25% of $120,000 is $30,000. So Rashid's capital, the, ba the value of his capital is $30,000 because it's 25% of the new partnership what that he's once he's invested the cash invested is forty two thousand dollars so there's a difference in this journal entry so we know that something has to be allocated and we're going to allocate it to the two partners that are presently existing in the partnership so the existing partners receive a bonus or and the way it practically works out is an increase to their capital accounts because Rashid is willing to pay more than his partnership interest in order to join the partnership. In this example, upon admitting a new partner, the partnership agreement calls for any difference to be shared equally among the existing partners. But it could be different. It could be based on their capital balances. It could be based upon an agreed upon ratio. But in this instance, we're going to look at it as though the partnership agreement requires any difference to be shared equally. So the cash is $42,000 that's being invested. Rashid's capital balance is 25% of the new partnership. And so the difference of $12,000 will be shared equally among Zane and Perez. And so their capital balances will be credited for this bonus of um, Rashid being willing to invest forty two dollars to get a $30,000 um, valued interest in the partnership. Now, a new partner is admitted, and the new partnership's interest in the partnership is less than the amount invested. So maybe the partners are now looking at Rashid because he's got a great client base, and they are willing to accept him if he pays less than the 25% of the new value of the partnership because they want him in the partner in the partnership because he's got a great count client base. So that's another that's a reason why this dynamic could come into pain. So in this instance, Rashid invests eighteen thousand dollars for a twenty-five percent interest in the partnership. So the partnership interest is twenty-five thousand. Zaning Perez's capital is worth seventy-eight thousand. The amount invested will be eighteen thousand. Now the partnership with the new partner is going to be worth seven ninety-six thousand. 
25% of 96000 means the partnership interest is valued at 24000 but the cash that is being invested is 18000 So we can see there's a difference in imbalance in this journal entry. So Rashid's capital is going to be valued at 25% of the new partnership value. He's investing 18000 so the new partner receives a bonus exemplified as a decrease to the capital accounts of the existing partners because Rashid paid less than his partnership and interest when admitted. In this example, upon admitting a new partner, the partnership agreement calls for any difference to be shared equally amongst the existing partners. So Rashid effectively receives a bonus of an additional six thousand, which is the difference between twenty four thousand dollars, the value of his capital account, and the cash that he was willing to invest. And effectively, this decreases by debiting the capital accounts of Zane and Perez. So now let's talk about what happens when a partner withdraws from a partnership. Partners can withdraw in one of two ways. A partner can sell his interest to another. So we saw that earlier when we looked at the admission of a new partner or selling a partnership interest. It's a similar dynamic as when the other purchase, another purchases a partnership interest. Or, and this is the examples we'll look at now because we've looked at this example earlier. The partnership can distribute cash and or non-cash assets to the withdrawing partner to settle their interest. We're just going to look at a cash example. So the withdrawing partner can receive an amount equal to the value of his capital balance or her capital balance, less than the value of the capital balance, or more than the value of the capital balance. However manifested, when a partner withdraws, a new partnership must be formed from the remaining partners. So let's look at this. A withdrawing partner receives an amount equal to their capital balance. So the current capital balance before withdrawals is Zane is 84,000, Perez is 38,000, and Rashid is 38,000. So now Rashid is withdrawing and he's getting cash from the partnership in the value of 38,000. His capital balance is 38,000. So it is equal to the amount of his capital balance. Now let's look at this. The withdrawing partner receives a less than the amount equal to the capital balance. And so in this example, upon withdrawal, the partnership provides that the remaining partners will share any difference equally. So we see that the total partnership is worth 160000 and Rashid's capital balance is worth 38000 So we're going to debit his capital balance because he's withdrawing. And in this instance, the partnership is only willing to pay him 34000 Now, why can this happen? Well, it can be that Rashid just simply wants to get out and the partners aren't willing to pay him. And instead of going through the hassle of some legal maneuvers, Rashid just says, all right, just, just keep the $4,000, all right? So in this instance, Rashid's capital is going to be debited for the amount of his present capital balance, the cash he's receiving, right? We know how to record cash. We're going to credit cash. And the difference, the 4000 difference, is going to be shared between Zane Capital and Perez Capital. Now let's look at another instance where the withdrawing partner receives more than the amount equal to the capital balance. So in this instance, the partnership value of the assets or the partnership's um, ability to earn income may be more than the value of Rashid Capital, Rashid's capital, the withdrawing partner. And so the partners are willing to pay a little bit more. They're probably thinking, well, if Rashid leaves, then there's that much more to share amongst ourselves. So Rashid's capital, again, is going to be anchored to the value of his present capital. So we're going to debit that because he is withdrawing. And the partners are willing to pay him $40,000 when he leaves. So there's a difference in the journal entry between the cash they're paying him and the value of his capital. And so in this instance, we're saying that they are going to share the difference equally. But again, it could be based on a ratio or capital balances, any one of a number of scenarios. But just in, for simplicity's sake, let's just assume that it's going to be shared equally. So the $2,000 difference will be shared between Zane 